Hello guys and girls and welcome to the occupational upgrade to oxygen not included where we've got so many new things. Oh, he's going back. Let's follow him along. Oh my goodness me. Where do I even start? I think this is going to be my biggest update video yet. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and briefly show all the new things that have been added to the game. And then I'll probably release some extra videos that go into more detail about certain things. But these are some of the new items that are in the game. But there is so much more. So let's start off with what we've got over here. Uh, I'm in debug mode so I can show you all of these items. We have have over here the steam turbine it's a new item for making power uh, it's a bit finickety to use um, i'll very briefly show you how i managed to get this thing working uh, you basically need it in a, a big room you need to fill it with steam um, you also need uh, to just connect these pipes together or put a piece of pipe on there to stop the warning. Uh, it doesn't need liquid piping into it. So don't forget this is a preview. Things do change as it goes along. This will produce for you using steam. Um, tw where's the amount of power? 8 kilowatts. I was going to say 20 kilowatts. 8 kilowatts, which is absolutely nuts. Um... But it needs to be in a room like this where there's a load of steam underneath. And at the minute it needs to be at least 200 degrees C, as you can see there. And then what it will do, if we add a new uh, battery along here, you'll notice... There we go, we'll fill that up. We'll just chuck some conductive wire on there. There we go, that's going to start filling that up super, super quick. So it needs to be able to vent through the top like this. Now this is still a void up here, even though it looks like steam is coming through, it isn't. But basically, it's sucking the steam up through there, going through a load of fans and whatnot, spinning it around, causing the power, and then venting out the top, although technically nothing does come out. And it makes an absolute ton of power. A bit glitchy at the moment, but an amazing addition, I think. We can have lots of fun with that, particularly down at the bottom of the world. You can start sending water down here to make steam and have one of those go in. I think you'll absolutely love it. So that is the first new addition to the game. Then also in the power tab, we have the smart battery. Um, if we have a look... Oh, actually, the steam turbine needs a lot of plastic to be made. Just thought I'd mention that. Uh, the smart battery down here... Let's just pause the game. Poor dupes. <laughs> it says, uh, stores most runoff power from generators but loses charge over time. Has a logic input. Becomes active when charged above the set threshold. So it's basically a battery that you can have uh, with automation attached to it. So you can have a standby percentage, an active percentage. Uh, if we see what it says. There we go. Logic input become active when battery has less than percent charged logic input will go on standby when battery has more than 100 percent charged so a nice way of automating your power setups there and it's not too expensive if i remember correctly the smart battery no it needs refined metals uh 200 of those so that's good um i've put the electric grill here obviously that isn't new um but there's been a lot of changes to the recipes how much food you get food has really changed um i've also put this here to remind me you will no longer be constantly living off of millwood oh my goodness me they've changed uh, what millwood needs um, and it needs fertilization uh, you need farmers and jobs we'll get to that in a moment another huge huge change to the game this is game breaking but game changing stuff we're talking about here so food is uh, had a major overhaul so yeah, starting off, games are going to be very difficult. But, yeah, I think you're going to want to sort of beeline to the better food. Uh, mushrooms and fried mushrooms seem, seem to be perhaps the go-to food. Um, we have hats, which come down to jobs. Uh, this is the scientist hat. But I'll come back to jobs in a minute. Let's just, let's just go through these things here. The other biggest change that we've got is this stuff here. Uh, the ore conveyor belt. Um, if I just actually remove that... We'll come back to that station in a moment. I'll pop that on the end so we don't forget about it. If we put over here uh, an ore transport arm, and I want to show you this working, and then I can tell you what is going on, and a storage compact. Oh, we have smart storage compactors as well. That's something else that's been added. That has an automation item on it. I'll quickly show you that before we get into that. There we go. Stores the resource of your choosing. I'm assuming that when you click on that, well, when it's full up, 
Yeah, there's no sort of settings you can have on that, but I think what happens is when it's full up, it then outputs an automation charge so you can turn things on and off. So we'll see how that goes. Right, let's add this here. That's going to have everything in. So what you're going to see happening, once we power this thing up, uh, let's grab a conductive wire. There we go. Let's get this thing moving. There we go. It's picking up the copper, shoving it in there, and it will soon start grabbing items from here as well. Ashcan's giving us a bit of a hand. Are you going to start grabbing these items? Sometimes it takes a while to sort of kick in. But basically, we have an ore transfer arm, which will suck items up from the ground. Let me put some items on the ground. If I paint in uh, some coal like that, and then if I dig that, it will fall on the ground. Uh, this is actually full up. I want this to start coming out. Come on. You should be able to do it. Oh, I know what it is. Priority three. There we go. What's the priority on there? We'll put that on a priority one. There we go. And that's starting to suck the coal from there into here. There we go. And you can see it moving along. This is... Oh, someone's died. Ignore that. Ignore that. This is picking up coal from the ground. There it goes. Ashcan is sort of in the way. But you can see how it works. Puts it into the conveyor inbox, which is basically like another sort of chest. Um, and then these will go along the conveyor lines. And this is a block, a conveyor bridge. You can go through walls. It then goes into the conveyor out box. Again, I believe that can just be used by dupes. They can take items out. But also, you can use the transfer arm. And as long as the priority on the chest that you're aiming for, or the storage compactor, I should say, as long as that priority is higher than the out box, it will move the items over to there. Priorities have changed. No more priority nine. Oh my goodness me. That was like the biggest thing that I saw. It's now one to five and you've got toggle strict priority. So duplicates will perform standard priority errands that match their job preference. We'll come back to jobs in a minute. Before other standard priority errands, strict priority errands will be performed in priority order regardless of a duplicate's preference. So there's now... A different level of jobs. There we go. You see Ashcan can take items out of there and move them as well. And he's actually stopping the automation arm from doing it. But that's fine. So yeah, you can see how this works. Um, and also the fact that this will automatically transfer items from and to things is fantastic. Uh, we'll come back to something we could do with that in a moment. So the next thing to look at is a farm station. Uh, it has the same picture as the, the composter. That's it. It looks like the composter at the moment. Um, but the farm station allows the assigned farmer to increase the growth speed of crops. Um, so you want to put this inside a room with your mill wood or whatever you're doing. And he'll make fertilizer. But it needs to be in a greenhouse room. And if you notice, it says there, adds effect, farmer's tune-up. Tune-up is a new thing that's been added to the game as well. <laughs> so many new things. I did tell you so many new things. Um, so they will tune up the plants and make them better. But it needs to be a farmer that does that job. And it needs to be in a greenhouse. Again, something we'll come back to. Um, another new item is the germ sensor. Again, that's an automation item. You can set to how many germs it needs to see. There we go. We can attach that to there. And that can turn automation systems on and off. So very cool. And then we have the power control station. Uh, it needs to be inside a power plant room. Uh, power control station allows the assigned electrical engineer, another new job, to optimize generators. This building is a necessary component of the power plant room. And that adds the effect power technicians tune up. Um, so that will improve buildings. What they basically do is come over here and work on this. Let's change Ashcan. Let's change his job. Let's put some power along and into there. Does that not need power? Oh, it needs to be in a generator's room. Yeah, a power plant room. We won't bother with that right this second. Um, but he will basically make items in there that he will then take along to a generator, um, such as down here, where we have the power going, so like a coal generator or manual generator and all the other ones, and it will tinker them, and it will add a bonus to them so they will produce more power and be more efficient. Um, the cost of the ore transport, again, these are using refined materials. The conveyor rail is pretty cheap, but the rest, um, actually the conveyor out box is pretty cheap. The inbox needs refined, and the bridge is pretty cheap. So, 
I've seen a lot of people sort of saying, well, how's that going to be helpful? Because by the time you've mined stuff, do you want to move it somewhere else? But you will be able to automate things. And I thought this was a good example here. Just, just this little setup here. If we paint uh, some coal in there. There we go. And then if I dig that, so it all falls to the ground. There we go. And then if you give this a second, we set the priority to that. We'll set it up nice and high. This will start transferring into... Uh, our coal generator and there it goes it's transferring over automatically into there it didn't work straight away because i had these batteries over here with poor joshua trapped in here making power for us and as the batteries are already full to the top this says battery is sufficiently full so this didn't work so that's good it's not going to chuck stuff in there that doesn't need and um, but as soon as that runs down and fills up the battery it will then put in another piece of coal so let's speed this up a bit i don't know how much let's just see how this goes i might just add a few more batteries in here i'm gonna end up blocking you in i'm afraid there we go you'll survive and i want to just see at what point it adds in there we go. So we know we're definitely going to be filling those up. At what point it's going to add another piece of coal in. So let's do that. Let's attach that to there. Okay. So we can see that's dropping down. Will it get all the way to the end before it adds another one in? Right, it's coming all the way to the end. Teeny tiny bit of power left. And there we go. And these say battery sufficiently full. Ah, oh, poor little guy down here. Let's add a few more batteries in. Uh, and see if we can get this thing to kick in. Let's do another four. There we go. Let's add those in. Let's get that connected to there. There we go. Yeah, so when it's totally empty, it will add another piece of coal in. Of course, that is going to work. Uh, let's mop up some of this stuff here. That is going to work with things also like algae terrariums. So if you have an algae terrarium and you have a storage compactor, let's actually put... The ore transfer arm. So it works with things that aren't ore as well. There we go. Uh, if we say in there we are going to have... We need to paint some algae. Okay, there we go. We have a load of algae stored into here. This has power. Oh, that also needs water, doesn't it? Let's add some water in here for this guy to put in there. Okay, here he comes. Water's going in. Now it just needs algae. So when he's filled it up with water, I'm going to stop him from doing any of that. Uh, let's close that down. Let's destroy him. Sorry, Meep. And this should... Oh, he's already put algae in the sneaky so-and-so. <laughs> he caught us out. Well, you get the idea. This will automatically transfer algae from there to here. And keep a system like this running as well. So it's something... Uh, that's going to take away the stress from your dupes. It is going to need, or, you know, the amount of work they need to do. It is going to need refined metals, but certainly some automation can be done here. Right, let's take a look at something else that's been added that's new. The job panel up here. So, whereas before you would just assign people jobs through this screen down here. So, we've still got the toggle work errand screen that you can use. Uh, as you move on in the game, you will need to upgrade your people, your dupes, with different levels of jobs. So, this is tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, and tier 5. Each of the tiers has a different level of expectation as to the standards of your base in different areas. So, we look at tier 1. Minor decor duplicates in this job have low decor standards. Tier 2, standard food. They would like their food to meet basic living standards. And now they're looking for decor upgrades. Tier 3, they're happy with standard food but now want medium decor. Now they want good food and medium decor. And now they want good food and high decor. Um, why would you go through all of this hassle? Well, as dupes get upgraded, they can be better at their job. And also, for certain tasks, you will need, um, like here, an exosuit engineer. They can move quickly in exosuit. So, it, it, there really is a lot of bonuses to all of these. But, first of all, you can assign uh, people to the job. So, if you have a look on this little list here, let's take Camille, for instance. Um, her stats are not particularly high. Let's just scroll down on here. She's got a couple of ones, zeros, and everything else. But she's got some certain interests. Uh, being a farmhand, being a miner, being a farmer, being a miner. 
Uh, that's Apprentice Miner, beg your pardon, Season Miner. So she's got an interest in these tasks here. So even though she has uh, no skills in those areas, if they have an interest, they will pick up skills quicker. And of course, that would be even quicker if she had a good learning. Um, let's have a look. If we take a look at Camille, where is she? There we are. Let's have a look at her stats. Is she good at learning? She isn't. But if she was good at learning, <laughs> then that would obviously help as well, as it always did. So, let's assign some different people here. Uh, if you open this one up here, you can see what they like. If you open this one here, you can see the best ones for the job. Camille, you know, she's got an interest in being a farmer. Ashkan has already got six in farming. So, I think Ashkan is going to be the farmer. And, of course, we can assign more than one. And we can take them away as well. So, there we go. Um, let's have a look. Risha, research, research assistants. Nobody particularly good, uh, but Stinky, he's got a one and he looks like he's going to enjoy that job. We have Apprentice Miner. Um, let's give Ari that one with a three. Uh, Harold, there we go. He's got a five and he likes being an architect. So good for building. We will add him in in there. Uh, the cooks, interior designers, the groundskeeper, and the golfer. Golfer. <laughs> the gopher, who goes and supplies things, and the engineer, all come under level two. So they would need an upgrade uh, in their food, to standard food. So let's assign a cook. Camille, she's going to be a cook. Um, I want to get all different people. Actually, is Camille already assigned to something? No, she's not. Let's just double-double check that. No, she isn't. I want to assign everybody to something different. Uh, we could do it up here. No, let's do it this way here. I want to get all the different hats to have a look at. So Camille is assigned there, but it's not showing that she's assigned here. So I'm hoping... We've got two Camilles. We have got two Camilles. We've got three Camilles. Oh my goodness, I didn't even notice that. All right, okay. Groundskeeper. Let's just stick anybody down. Camille number two and Camille number three. There we go. So you can see how some of these uh, jobs upgrade. If you want your farm hand to upgrade to a farmer, you're really going to have to have good food, standard food, and medium decor as opposed to just minor decor. If they get to this level and then they're not happy, it will cause a lot of stress. So you really want to keep that in mind. Um, so this will change their job priorities. We'll talk about that in a minute. I know we're just all interested in what hats they're going to wear. There we go. Some of them have got hats. They're thinking about their new jobs. They're happy. And they're sticking on their hats and they're clapping. <laughs> there we go. So we've got all the different types of hats for all the different types of jobs. Um, they can wear these in the exosuits. Uh, that slightly bugged, or it was last night. So, but that will be fixed soon. But there we go. So, how does that work now when you assign jobs? Basically, what will happen? Let's take uh, Harold here. Uh, he's an architect. Here we go. Let's take our digger. Ari, apprentice miner. So if you set a job of mining for Ari to do, he will do mining. Um, if you also have a job for Camille, who is... No, here we go, chef. What's that one there? Go gopher. <laughs> I'm going to say golfer a lot, aren't I? Let's take these two. So Ari, you've got some mining jobs. Um, you've got some cooking jobs. But let's say in this section down here, you've assigned everybody to do everything. So who is going to do the job? Well, it seems sort of obvious, but your miner will go and do the mining jobs. And your cook will go and do the cook job. So it's going to enable you, instead of having to do doors and block them off and stop people leaving certain rooms and all that sort of thing, you can tell people this is the job that you have to concentrate on. If there's no cooking to do or no mining to do, they will go and do whatever else you've assigned them to do. But eventually, they will... Uh, get better. See this one here, Apprentice Miner, 0.2% mastery. It will increase. I don't know what the level needs to be to upgrade, um, but there will be a point where they'll then upgrade to a farmer. They get extra seeds when harvesting plants. Season farmer, again, it, it goes up um, and there's lots of benefits. So something you really want to look at, it's a bit of a big change to the game. Uh, you don't have to dive into this straight away. As we've said, everybody can still do everything. Um, but if you really want to train some of your dupes for the long term to be really good at certain jobs, this is the way you want to go. Uh, also, like I said with the jobs, certain tasks can't be performed without somebody who's particularly good at that task. Uh, let's just pop this down on here and have a look at our exosuit forge. Whoops, let's try that again. Let's grab our exosuit forge. 
Oh, the floor needs to come in first. There we go. So if we have a look on here, it says, obviously, it's outside the power plant room. Colony lacks electrical engineers. And this one here, colony lacks farmer seasoned farmers. And I think this one, does this need? No, that doesn't need somebody who's trained in that. Okay, well, that's good. Um, so electrical engineer is an upgrade from a general engineer. So you'd need to get somebody upgraded to do that. Uh, they can generate power, use fans, scrub, or toggle things on and off, and fabricate. So that's going to take a bit of upgrading to get to that. Uh, our farmer, there we go, to seasoned farmer before they can use that uh, device. Um, so that's a bit of a, a jump and an upgrade. And they're going to need good food and high decor to be happy to be a seasoned farmer. So I think getting food early on is going to be is going to be fun. <laughs> but definitely more of a challenge. Definitely more of a challenge. Uh, we also mentioned the new rooms that there are as well. We've obviously got the, the standard bog standard room that doesn't do anything. The latrine, we had that before, and the barracks, the mess hall, the med bay, the power plant, where the power control station goes. Um which will improve power production that needs to be in there uh, we now have the greenhouse which would have a farming station and crops with farmers and it would increase their growth speed uh, the machine shop where the mechanic station would go i don't think the mechanic station is actually in here yet no it isn't so that's something else that we're going to be waiting for um and the recreation room we had that one before yeah so some more rooms that we need to keep an eye on plus we're going to be having a mechanic station so looking forward to that when it's added ah here we go one other new change that i want to show you is the digging has changed so obviously we can't dig these items up here because uh this is neutronium although what does it say now colony lacks minor seasoned miners so neutronium can be dug at the moment whether that will change or not i don't know that normally seems to be the world border uh, but let's pick something else down here here we go good example so these can be dug even though it's unreachable don't worry about that but this here that can't be dug it's a different color because um it needs somebody who is actually in the minor profession to do that even though it doesn't say on the tool tip um, Abyssalite is normally a good example. Here we go. We've got some here. Let's just mark this to be dug. Yep. So it's actually saying needs seasoned miners to do all of these. Uh, but these things here are okay to be dug. These things here are okay to be dug. So you are really going to want to work your miners up from miner, apprentice miner to miner to seasoned miners to be able to actually get around in your base and start removing Abyssalite. So the thought in my mind is i don't know how easy it is to upgrade people onto different tiers of jobs i mean he's already at two percent and i've not really been doing anything <laughs> with the game so um yeah i wonder i wonder whether it is if they're just assigned if we unpause the game let's let's unpause the game let's put it onto super speed and let's have a look at the jobs is this going up or do they actually have to have something to do i think they might need to actually have something to do. Let's see what they're doing. So if we just pause that a sec. Yeah, they're standing around doing nothing. And it's going up. There we go. So it just goes up with time, even though they're not doing anything. So that's good because I was thinking, could you get to the point where you assign somebody to be a miner? There's nothing left to dig and you can't go any further because he's, <laughs> he's not a seasoned miner. But no, it's just having people assigned in a job. You can un unassign people if they get too stressed at doing something. Yeah, a lot of flexibility there. I could see that being abused. You could just... <laughs> as long as your base is running, you can just assign them to a job and leave them and they will upgrade. But maybe that will change as things go on. And one other little addition, which I think is very helpful, is you can have a look under the stats tab to see what is stressing out a dupe today. So... Decor expectations, pop teardrums, there's so much oxygen in here, and the net stress. So that's really going to help, particularly when you get to higher tiers of jobs, to keep an eye on what is going on with all of our dupes. So, 
I believe that is everything that's been added in this update. There is so much stuff. There's so much more room for fun automation. I think we can have a lot of fun with these things. Um, I'm going to be starting a new LP in a playthrough of Oxygen Not Included using the occupational upgrade. So be sure to subscribe. Hit the big B in the corner and don't miss out on seeing how we're going to use all these cool new things. If you enjoyed this, leave a like. Please share it with people as well that may enjoy this. And I will see you tomorrow, I think, for episode one of Oxygen Not Included, the occupational upgrade. Oh my goodness, that's such a long name. And thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.